Hi everyone, welcome back. So um, I've been to my local garden centre and they've just got their fruit trees in stock. Um, so I picked up this apple tree. Uh, it's a bare rooted apple tree. Uh, they're really cheap. I think it's about six or seven pounds. And it's a variety, Granny Smith. So uh, we all like Granny Smiths, so I couldn't resist. So I picked that up. Uh, so I thought I'd do a little video just to show you how, I, how I'm gonna pot it up. Because uh, it's not going in the ground, I'm going to be growing it in a pot. Um, it's a little bit different than planting it straight in the ground. Uh, you can grow any any tree in a pot, obviously. Um, you've just got to control it a bit better and not let it get too big. Uh, so stay tuned, and I'll get back to you in a sec, and I'll show you what I'm up to today. Okay, so this is the tree, the Groening Smith apple. Uh, it comes bare rooted, this is how they come. In a little bag there with the roots in. Uh, I've got my little heater on today because it's quite cold. And I've got it up to about 10 degrees in here, so that's quite comfortable now. So this is the tree, Granny Smith apple. Um, I'm gonna be putting it in a little pot, or well, quite a big pot, but I just thought I'd show you the tree. So uh, this is the best, the best one I could find out of what they had. Some of them looked a bit sorry for themselves. Um, so we'll get the roots unwrapped. I'll go find a pot and I'll show you how I'm gonna pot it up. Okay, so uh, when you get your bare rooted tree, this is what it'll come like, something similar to this. So it's just got a cable tie around the top. So I'll just cut that off. And then we'll get the roots unwrapped. Uh, you can see there's a root sticking out of the top here. Yeah. I'll just cut that off because that'll be no good because it'll be dried out now. So we'll get rid of that one. Get the roots out. So they're wrapped in, they're in a bag and then wrapped in clean film as well. So if you're gonna get a bare root of tree, you want to get it early on in the season. Because yeah, the longer they're left in the shops, in the warm, the more the roots will dry out, the less chance it will have to be viable. So that's the roots there. So it's got some good roots. And I normally I'll reuse whatever it comes in, just put it in the bottom of the pot. It's only it's only like bark chipping or wood chips. Uh, but just bung it in the bottom of the pot, it won't do any harm. Big rock there. And this is the pot I've chose. So depending on how big you want the tree to get, uh, depends on how what sort of size pot you, you're gonna use. Uh, but I'm gonna keep it quite small for now so this pot should be perfectly fine. So all I'll do now is fill the pot up probably about halfway or so with some compost. So I'll just go get some. Okay, so this is just traditional multi-purpose compost. Um, I've gone for a slightly more expensive brand uh, just because I'm finding the quality of the cheap ones is not much good at the moment. Uh, it's full of big chunks of bark and stuff which is not broken down. Uh, but anyway, so I'll get about halfway, just over halfway. And then with the roots, you want to spread them out evenly. Uh, don't let them cross underneath or anything try and get them to go out radially so like the spokes on a bike tyre so they all go outwards and you don't have any nasty roots going across or round uh, they can strangle the tree uh, if you let them wrap around the trunk for instance and this is the root stock this bottom bit I'm not sure what stock it is and uh, this is the grafted, um, this is the Granny Smith's bit here. This would just be a strong rootstock 
from a bog standard apple variety. So you can see it's a bit bent, this tree. I didn't notice that when I bought it, but it doesn't really matter. So you can either just plant it at an angle like that, which is what I'll probably do, or you can try and straighten it up in the future. Uh, but like I said, I'm not too worried. So I spread the roots out and I bury it up to see where the roots end, where the roots start coming out. I'm gonna go a couple of inches higher up, not too much higher. And then I'll just spread the roots out. Try and push, push them down so that they're going down into the soil. Uh, so they're kind of like throughout the height of the pot rather than just on a flat level in the pot. And then I will fill up the rest of the pot with compost. So I'm just filling up the pot now. I'll break up all the big clumps. And then what I will do is lift it up a bit like this. Just make sure the compost goes underneath and uh, it kind of makes the roots go down a bit more. And then I'll carry on filling it up. Same thing again. And then just using your fingers or you can use a tool uh, I'll just poke the soil in around the roots, like so. And I've got to try and make this as straight as I can. Obviously it's got bend in it, so about there should be good. And then I'll just top the rest of the pot up. I'm going to fill it up almost to the brim because uh, this compost will settle down and the level will go down quite quickly. So just work it in. So, okay, so that's potted up. Uh, you can see it's got a, it's got a bit of a bend there. I didn't notice that when I bought it, uh, but it won't affect the tree. And I've straightened up the top, so the the top's straight, and I've got the bend right down at the bottom there. So I've kind of had to apply it at an angle in the pot, but it doesn't matter. Uh, when I come to repot it, I can change the angle. Um, what I will do is I will put a bit of bamboo in there and tie it in um, just to hold it still because uh, we don't want it blowing around too much. Uh, we don't want the roots being disturbed. Uh, if the wind moves it around stuff it can damage the new roots that start growing. So I'll go find a suitable piece of bamboo. Okay, so I've got some string and a couple of bits of bamboo. So I'm just going to firm this soil down. Quite firm, but not, not overly firm. I'm not going to compact it right down. Uh, but just to get rid of the air pockets and hold the tree still. And then I'm going to put two pieces of bamboo, I think. So put one at the back here. And what I don't want is, I don't want them to be rubbing on the tree, so I'll put them 
just behind the tree and just in front of the tree, sort of crisscrossing, like so. And then I've got my twine, natural garden twine. Uh, this is biodegradable, so I like to use it uh, just because when you come to cut it off and stuff, you always end up dropping some. And uh, if you use the plastic stuff, you have to pick it all up. Uh, but if you use the natural twine, you can just leave it wherever it drops and it disappears within a few weeks. And then all I'm going to do is tie the tree into the bamboo so that the strings hold in the tree, not the bamboo, because we don't want it rubbing on the bamboo. So we'll kind of make it, I'll try and turn it around so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm putting the tree in the middle of the string. I'm kind of wrapping it around so that it holds the tree. It doesn't matter if it moves a bit. Uh, you just want it to be a bit more stable in the pot. Like so, I'm sure you'll figure it out. You can do it however you feel is best. And this is only temporary until the roots have established. As soon as the roots have established, uh, they'll hold it nice and firmly in the pot. So something like that, where it's in between the bamboo. So the bamboo can move, the tree can move. It just gives it a bit more st stability. Um, as soon as it starts growing, as soon as spring comes along, um, you give it a few weeks after it started growing and the roots will hold it still anyway. So uh, Now all you have to do is protect it from strong winds and harsh frost until it's established. So it's going to live in the greenhouse probably for a few weeks. As soon as I start seeing some signs of life and the weather warms up a bit, I'll stick it outside and it will live out there with all the other ones. So that's all there is to it. One more thing I forgot to say, um, we should give it good old water, fully saturate the compost. Uh, just keep watering it until it starts coming out the bottom. And once it's soaked all the way in, uh, I normally give it another little water afterwards, maybe in about another 20 minutes or so. And then it probably won't get any more water until spring because that'll probably be plenty. Uh, but if it does start drying out, just give it another water. Don't let it dry out now. So that's the tree potted up in there. So I will keep you updated on it, along with all my other trees. So there's the tree, it's outside now. Uh, I did decide to put it out here. We're not doing any frost for this foreseeable future. Um, if we do any really harsh weather, I'll just stick it in the greenhouse overnight. Uh, but there's my other three apple trees there. And I did find out the rootstock, if you're interested. It is M9 rootstock. So it's not self-pollinating, it says here. So I think that means it needs other apple trees to pollinate it. So, I'm not sure if it has to be the same variety. I don't think it does, so it should be all right. Because I've got four apple trees now. I've got cherry, a plum, and a pear as well over there. Getting quite big now. So they're all planted exactly the same way. So I'll keep you updated on this. 
Um, what I will do is I'll just give it another quick water in a minute just to make sure the soil is nice and wet. Okay everyone, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. Um, so it'll be the same process for any fruit tree really or any tree in general. Um, you can grow them all in pots. You don't have to put them in the ground. Uh, you've just got to be a bit more um, conscious about watering it and feeding it and pruning it because uh, obviously it's only got limited space to grow in a pot um, so you have to be on top of watering it don't let it dry out and make sure you feed it during the growing season and you can repot it and trim it back repot it just to revitalize the soil uh, but just make sure you feed them and water them and you should be able to grow them perfectly fine uh, you can keep them pruned and keep them as dwarf dwarf fruit trees and uh, there's not really much difference I know you can get dwarf root stock but there's no reason why you can't prune it to keep it dwarf uh, but anyway hope you found that useful and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time